Hi AP Bio students and I'm making the screencast to kind of help you with water potential problems and uh, just going over uh, again what is water potential uh, when we talk about water potential we're talking about the direction of water will flow across a semi-permeable membrane and we always know that water will go where there's more water to less water across a semi-permeable membrane now, what affects water potential? Um, so if you see this equation, um, water potential equals uh, water potential, uh, pressure potential, plus water potential equals solute potential. Now, these are two factors that affect water potential. Pressure water potential is basically what it means, physical pressure. And what we see physical pressure in living organism is example is in plant cells, the cell wall it exerts physical pressure um, when water is in the vacuum. Now in animal cells, since there is no cell wall, usually uh, pressure potential is zero. Otherwise, it would be positive. Now, there are examples where it could be negative, like <coughs> here in example D, that you could usually see in transpiration where water is being pulled up. Uh, Solute potential is, the pot uh, as you can see, is negative, and it decreases water potential because it occupies the free water molecules and decreases their availability, and therefore uh, it's a negative number. And it's zero if there is no solutes in the solution. So any solutes in a solution would decrease the water potential. So wherever you have more solutes, you have less water where you have less solutes, you'll have more water. Now, to figure out the solute potential, you would use this formula here. And to understand this formula, it's negative. I equals ionization constant. And that means that if you uh, place a, a molecule, a compound in water and dissociates, then it dissociates into a number of um, molecules. So for example, glucose is one, it does not dissociate in water, but sodium chloride will dissociate into sodium ions and chlorine ions. So that's why its ionization would be two. C is the molar concentration usually represented by M for molarity, and R is a constant, pressure constant, and that's uh, liters, bars, moles per Kelvin. And then temperatures in Kelvin. So if you're given a temperature in Celsius, you got to convert it to Kelvin by adding 273. Now, here is a problem uh, we did in class. Uh, calculate the solute potential of a 0.1 molar sodium chloride solution at 25 degrees. So basically, when you see the word solute potential, then you know that you have to uh, use this formula right here. And in this case, I is 2 because when sodium chloride is placed in water, uh, it dissociates into sodium and chloride. And the concentration of solute here is 0.1 m, which is given right here. And R is the pressure, which is a constant. And you don't have to memorize this, nor the formula, because that's given on your formula sheet. And temperature equals, again, 273 plus 25 degrees Celsius to convert it into Kelvin. Okay, and then that will give you 280, 298 Kelvin. And then you just plug in chug, and then uh, F, you multiply all this, and notice um, uh, F, when you multiply, again, it's a negative number, don't forget that. And you get negative 4.95 bars is the unit. Okay. Now, the next problem asks the solute concentration of a plant cell the inside the plant cell is 0.15. Place in a solution of sodium chloride with 0.1. Sketch and label the diagram of the scenario and predict and explain which way will the water uh, diffuse or osmose. So again, it will go from where there's more water to less water. So 0.1 is a lower concentration than 0.15. So therefore, you have less solutes compared to the inside of the cells and more water. So therefore, water will go in the cell. Okay. Now, the third part of the problem, this should have been C, calculate what the turgor pressure must equal if there is no net diffusion, no net diffusion between the solution and the cell. So the water potential of the solution would equal the water potential of the plant, then therefore you would have no net diffusion. 
So the water potential of the solution equals zero, where there's no pressure, plus the water potential of the solute, which is due to the 0.1 molar sodium chloride. So that what we figured out in the first problem. And we got negative 4.95. So you can do exactly what we did there. Now, if that's what we get for the solution, right, this is what we're looking for. The potential uh, due to pressure. And then this is the number that we want to figure out what is the solu uh, solute's potential inside the cell. So if we take 0.1 molar sodium in the cell and uh, plug it into our formula here, negative 2 again because it's sodium chloride, 0.15 molar, that's what's found in the cell, and our constant times 298 gives us negative 7.5. And then we uh, plug it into our equation right here. So uh, when we plug it in, we solve for uh, pressure potential, and we get 2.45. So basically, uh, besides using the terms water potential, you also hear the term hypotonic, hypertonic, and isotonic. So here, this is up here is an animal cell. What conditions would you have if water in an animal cell entered? And water would enter the animal cell if it was a hypotonic environment. So the word hypotonic means less solutes. but more water. Compared to inside the cell, you would have more solutes, but less water. So therefore, water would go in the cell, and the cell would burst, or lice. You'll hear the word lysis. Okay, That's why you never put like pure water in your IV. But plants, on the other hand, uh, like hypotonic environment where water enters a cell <coughs> and we say our plant cell is turgid. Okay, so plant cells are turgid and you see this plant is really happy. Now, here, what conditions are, uh, do you have isotonic conditions here where water enters and leaves at equal rates. So if say if this is in point 0.1 molar sodium chloride solution, and inside is point 0.1 molar sodium chloride. So it would go in and out at equal rates. And here this is where our cells are normal. And plant cells, on the other hand, they're not turgid, so but we call it they're flaccid. They're kind of wimpy, like this plant. And when water leaves an animal cell, like for example, if you drank a lot of salt water, and that's when it's in a hypertonic environment where you have a lot of solutes but less water compared to where you'll have less solutes but more water compared to the outside, so water leaves. And in plants, when water leaves, we call it plasmolysis because the plasma membrane collapses. In animal cells, it shrinks, or you'll hear the word crenate. Okay. So I hope this uh, helps you understand more about water potential and the terms hypo, hyper, and isotonic solutions and how water moves in each scenario.